Well, welcome everybody to Mining for More. We are continuing on through our James series. We are in James chapter three right now, and it's a very short chapter. We are still going to do this in two parts. And um, today we're going to be looking at James chapter three, verses one through 12, I believe we said, right, Dina? Yes. One through 12. Yeah. One through 12. It's, Big it's stuff. very convicting. Although I feel like every line has been very oh, convicting. Sorry. Ahead of time. Oh, we're just going to apologize. Oh, the whole book has been one giant conviction. Yeah. Um, but anyway, Dina, why don't you pray for us and then start us out in our reading? I would love to. Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you that it's true. And Lord, as we listen and read, would you speak to us and help us, Lord, as only you can to be transformed by your word so we can be more like you in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm going to start at James chapter three, verses one, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. <clears throat> Picking up in verse seven with the NIV. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by human beings, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salty spring produce fresh water. Mm. And there you have it. Wow. <laughs> oh it my is, goodness. Yeah, it's a lot to take <laughs> in. I mean, it's, it's very convicting. Mm -hmm. it's I mean, the first, the first verse, convicts both you and I back because it's mm -hmm. like not mm -hmm. many of you should become teachers yeah. in the church who mm -hmm. you teach will be held judged more strictly mm -hmm. when we lead others there's responsibility for everything we say and how mm -hmm. what the example that we we li we live and lead for others it's yeah yeah that that actually sat with me this morning too I and I as I was thinking about it I thought um you know, how often we want to tell people how it is. I think yeah. probably more today than ever. Um, we love to, you know, tell people who they should be and what they should say and, and how they should do things. And um, we want to kind of become the experts. We want to be kind of, we want to become the people who, who are telling everybody yeah. how it should be. And um, James is warning us here that, Listen, if you want to lead others, you need to lead the way Christ led. You don't have to lead with your mouth. You lead through serving. You lead through washing feet. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah, so that was a huge conviction. Yeah. And make sure that your, your life matches up with the message, yeah. right? It's yeah. like the person who's trying to be your financial advisor, but mm -hmm. like their own bank account is hurting, right? Or yeah. they're not wise with the way they spend their money. But then they're like, but you need to do this. It's like, it has to line up, right? So before yes. we can, it reminds me of like the spec yes. and the log. Like before you can say, let me take that like speck out of your eye. Let me make sure yeah. I'm checking. How do I, how am I doing, right? Yes. Well, am and I, then, you know, he drives that point home there in the next verse. He says, those who are okay. never at fault in what they say, they're perfect. Right. How, how so is, that's basically right. him saying, you're not perfect. Yeah, you're not perfect. None of us are perfect. Who is Absolutely. without fault in whatever we right. say? Christ, no. Christ alone. And, and let me say, the, what the verse that really stopped me in my tracks um, was actually verse 
um, the end of you know, verse two, it says, indeed, we will all make many mistakes. Mm. And I just sat on that verse for, I th- I'm still thinking about it this whole week mm-hmm. because I think how easily we can judge, mm-hmm. um, criticize, complain, point out mm-hmm. when someone has done something. And we forget that we all make many mistakes. Like that's us too. Mm-hmm. And I want people to have grace for me. Mm-hmm. I need to be willing to, to give that same grace. Right. Yeah, and I think like, what James is doing here too, is he's really saying to the people, you know, like we can, we can have this esteem, like this thought of ourselves. And, and I fall like victim to this all the time. Like, Oh, I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm a worship leader at a church. My husband's a pastor. Like I'm a good Christian. And James is reminding us that like who we are is actually manifested by how we speak, by how we care. I was actually led to, um, it's Matthew 12, 34. I'm just going to read this passage because I ended up reading it this morning and it was like, it just wrecked me, you know? So Matthew 12, 34 here, it says, um, Jesus is speaking here and it's, um, it's verses 30, 33 through 37. And I just want to read this now in light of what James is saying about how we yeah. speak to one another. Make a tree good and its fruits will be good. Make a tree bad and its fruits will be bad. Mm-hmm. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. And now yeah. he's speaking to the Pharisees here. He says, you brood of vipers. But we can also receive that. <laughs> how can you who are evil say anything good for out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth. Yes. Yeah. So it's out of the overflow of your heart. You know, sometimes I'll even like find myself ex- like trying to make excuses for myself. Like, yeah. I didn't really mean that. And it's almost no, like it's- the Lord being like, you didn't? Yeah. Or did you exactly mean that? Yeah. Are you really demonstrating who you are? For out of the overflow yeah. of your heart, your mouth speaks. Good people bring good things out of the good stored up in them. Evil yeah. people bring evil things out of the evil stored up in them. But I tell you that people will have to give an account on the day yeah. of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. Mm-hmm. And by your words, you will be condemned. Yeah. I was thinking about that oh, verse and I, that came to my mind this morning and I was like, where is it? And you found it. That is exactly oh, the verse. I, was I read that today and I was just, I was wrecked. I was just like, Lord, like, oh my gosh. Oh my yeah. gosh. I need your help. I need your help. All those careless things we say and we can't take them back. Like words are so powerful. Yeah. And, and I was thinking about Psalm 19, verse 14, because mm. I was thinking, well, how can we think about what we're saying? How can mm. we really kind of get to the source of it? And like you said, it's the meditation mm. of our heart. So Psalm 19, 14 says, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And that's where it starts. It doesn't start with our, our words. The words are what come after them. The mind has thought about it. The heart has, has wrestled with it. And then it comes out, mm-hmm. right? So everything starts in our mind. It starts here with what we, what we think about, what we let those words like deep down into our hearts and, our, and then it comes out of our mouth, right? Yeah, like and Jesus, Jesus reminds said, us that we're in control of it. You know, he basically mm-hmm. says there in verse four yeah. and five, he's like, you know, he, he compares our tongue to be like a horse's bit. Who controls yeah. the bit? The rider, That's the right. rider, you are in control. Of the pilot of a boat. He says he steers the boat where he wants to go. And likewise, the rudder, the tongue is like that. And it's like, it is being steered. Who is piloting you? Who is, yeah. who is in control of you? Yeah. We are in control right. of what we say, yeah. of how we respond, of how we react. This is our responsibility. Yeah. And then, you know, he goes on to verse six and he says, the tongue is a fire. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's a well, fire. have you ever seen like a little spark and yeah. then like, like it, it takes a piece of paper or something and it just ignites yeah. it goes, mm-hmm. and it goes from like a small little spark to like, and I was thinking about how sometimes like a careless comment. Yes. A yeah. little judgment, a little um, thoughtless mm-hmm. uh, observation that we like spew out, like, and it could be just like, oh, whatever, can start something yes. that we cannot take back. It okay? can have 
devastating effects. Have you ever seen those stories about the people who like they're dragging their muffler on some road, you oh. know, some distant road, like in the, this happened in Northern Minnesota. It was this little elderly couple, their muffler was dragging on the road and it caused sparks and it was during the summer. I mean, thousands and thousands of acres burned. Like yes. the smallest spark oh, caused yeah. such devastation. And you know what? The Lord can forgive and he will forgive when we repent of that. But the devastation is still there. Our words can cause such devastation. It can, it can just sweep through in ways that we never yeah. intended it to. Yes. And that's what James is actually trying to warn us about. Like what we think might not be a big deal. You know, that whole like sticks and stones may break red bones, mm -hmm. but words will never harm me. No. No, that's not true at all. No. That's not true at all. Our no, words, and sometimes like, it's not always our spoken word. It can mm -hmm. be words that we text. Mm -hmm. It can be words that we post. Mm -hmm. Okay. So sometimes we think, well, I haven't really said anything like yeah. bad or whatever. Yeah. But if you're, if that's going out to wherever you're sending your words out, if it's representing you, those are your words, right? Yeah. And um, in Proverbs 13, three, it said, those who control their tongue will have a long life. Mm. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. And I thought, <laughs> wow. I was like, that just yeah. like basically said it. Like, yeah. I was like, Lord, I really don't want to even talk anymore. I think I'm going to like mm -hmm. take a vow of silence, you know? But mm -hmm. we just realized like our words really do matter. And mm -hmm. and we will be, you know, there's there's accountability for what we say. Yes. And we can either help or we can yeah. hurt. Yeah. We can build up or we can tear down. We yes. can encourage or we can discourage. And I just, I, it broke my heart to, to think about that, the scripture where it says like, out of the same mouth, we're praising God. We're worshiping oh God. Yeah. And then we're talking. And I love how he says, I think my verse says that you're talking about your brothers and sisters. So again, he reminds us that he says, and so blessings come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely my brothers and sisters, he's reminding us again. It's like, we're not just talking about anybody. We're talking mm -hmm. about family. Mm -hmm. We're talking about people made in the image of God. So when we, mm -hmm. when we're criticizing or complaining or judging mm -hmm. someone, we're criticizing, complaining someone that was mm -hmm. created in the image of God. Yes. And you know what? It's good to remember that this whole, you know, I've always read this passage kind of like apart from James one and two. It is mm. really important. I would even recommend that as we're going through this course, when you pick up to read in chapter three, read one through five again. Yeah. Because it's, it's not three. that long. Right. Because what is James saying? The whole purpose of this is that our lives, yeah. the way that we live would reflect yes. the testimony of our faith. It would actually testify to a changed life in Christ. And so he's saying, yes, the way we act and part of how we act is how we speak. Right. That right. is considered our action. And, you know, the other thing that I thought about this is when we keep talking about the power of the tongue, mm. you know, I love that, that Psalm that you read, or was it the Proverbs? Oh, you think uh, no, about, some, which one? It can give life. Oh, our words can yeah. give life. Yeah. yeah. Those and, who control their tongue will bring a long life. We'll, we'll, we'll have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. So it's like, yes. there's the two differences, right? Yeah, the life. differences. And it can yes. be life-giving to you. Yeah. It can be life-giving to other people. David even said, I love how he says, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And it's almost like a command, right? Yeah. Bless him. I will bless you today, Lord. I will it is choose a command. to bless you. There are times yeah. when I have been upset about things and I have literally walked around my house saying, I thank you, Lord. I am blessing you today. I thank you for the thing. I am choosing gratitude. And sometimes we have to literally force our tongues. Yeah. And we will say, no, I will bless the Lord in the moment. Yes. I will honor him in this yeah. moment and take control, mm -hmm. as Paul says, yeah. of every part of our body and, and, and bless the Lord. Yeah. With so it. I was just thinking like, well, we were just talking about how it starts in our minds, right? And go down into our heart and it comes out of our mm -hmm. mouth. But the opposite is also very true. If we start saying something that might, we not, might not feel at the moment, right? Like you're mm -hmm. talking about like wanting to bless the Lord, even though I don't mm -hmm. feel like mm -hmm. something's going on and I'm, I'm upset. Well, if you start saying blessings, if you start being grateful, mm -hmm. let's yes. say you're upset with someone, but you start praying for that person. You're yes. asking the Lord 
to bless audibly, them. To I'd say them. I would audibly bless them. All of a sudden, your mind yes. now and your heart is like, oh, I like that person. I really want the best for that yes. person. What happened? Our mouths, our yes. words started to go into our heart yes. and change our mind. Yes. So it is the exact yes. same. It reverse. is sewing it back. It is sewing it back into our own lives. Yeah. yeah. It's so powerful. So our words can really change what our, our minds are thinking and our hearts. Yes. Yes. If it can change our attitudes. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, you know, that's hopeful to me. Yes. It's like, I think God's that's just, also the power of confession, the power, yeah. you know, it says confess your sins one to another. I mean, when we have to like, look at someone and apologize to them and say, Hey, I'm really sorry if I let that conversation get out of control, or I'm really sorry if I hurt you in that moment, or, you know, even like there have been times when I've been sitting with friends and, you know, we end up talking about frustrations and it kind of like goes down a road of gossip. Yeah. Like I have gone back and said, I'm really sorry that I let that conversation yeah. go somewhere that was not like edifying to Christ. Right. When we say that it holds yeah. us to another level of accountability. And here's the thing. None of us are perfect. No, James no. just said it. James just said it. Those who are never at fault in what they say are perfect. That is right. nobody. Okay. Right. So, hey, let's get this whole yeah. like expectation off each other that we're all going to be perfect. Yeah. I am not perfect. No, me neither. You are not perfect. Or nobody right. watching this video no. is perfect. Let's release each other from this level of perfection and let's apologize. Let's call it out when we've done things wrong and let's hold one another accountable in love. Because when we confess our sins, we don't want to do that again. It kind of stops us from wanting to do it again, <laughs> oh. right? So we're like, oh, oh yeah. okay, I mm -hmm. don't want to do it again. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to, yep. you know, I'm not going to, you yep. know, I'm not going to go down that road again. And you're right. And that's what it goes back to that verse in verse two for we've all made many mistakes. We, yep. we have to realize that all of us are mm -hmm. in the same boat and yep. we're here to help each other, encourage one another and realize that we're not, none of us are perfect. And so we just need to. Like, just but look at ourselves and say, what am I producing, right? Because it goes back to that, like, I can't be producing, like, salt and pure water out of the fresh water and, and salty water out of the same spring. It's just not, you know, it's not what God wants. He doesn't want us to have, like, wonderful blessings coming out and then, like, negative comments and complaining out of the next corner of our mouth. It's like, we just need to be consistent and looking at what we're producing. Right. We want Absolutely. To be like, Good. Absolutely. You know, I had, as I was just reflecting on this passage again this morning, I just, you know, I wrote down, I was like, Lord, help my words be seasoned with your spirit. I cannot tame my tongue. And that, mm -hmm. that's something that James is trying to remind us of, like in our own strength, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. We cannot tame our tongue, but he can change our hearts. And as he changes our hearts out of the overflow of what's in our heart, we will begin to speak. And um, I just wrote down here, I said, you know, we need not steer the ship. Be filled and keep on being filled and allow him to take over, allow him to move us, allow him to speak through us. You know, I know it's like, um, kind of you remember the whole like wwjd and it like got so over commercialized yes, and yes, got, like, so. Goofy about it but it is really true like it is really true you know the way that we will talk about someone I, I, is usually different than we would talk about them if they were in the room versus not right. in the room you know sometimes right. oh, especially somebody that we might be upset with or something and like i just keep coming back to lord how do i honor you with how I speak, because how we speak, like you said, to your point, Dana, gets right. sewn back into our it, own lives and, and especially to the lives of people around us, you know, to our children who are listening yes. to our conversations, yes. to our friends, to our spouses, um, and, and mostly to the Lord. Yeah. 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 And right. And it's, there's a lot of Psalms that say like, um, take control of what I say, Lord, help me to control my lips set a guard over my, my yes. lips. So Lord, you know, yeah, because our words are so powerful. Yeah. And, and if we could just think about like, how do I make my words, um, pleasing to mm -hmm. the Lord and helpful to those mm -hmm. around me. Right. And we have that power because yeah. there are words, 
So we can't say the devil made me do it. He didn't make me say it. No, No, we have the power to whether speak or not speak. And there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need to remember when that time to be silent is. And, you know, it's hard. And I think that's really, really key. If, you know, a few weeks back, um, I preached with Brian on hospitality and, and, and we talked a lot more about hosting the presence of the Lord. And it's about, and I think hosting the presence of the Lord is so evident when we come with words that are seasoned, you know, the words that have been given by the spirit words that um, will season conversations. And that can be hard work, like redirecting conversations, you know, closing certain kinds of conversations down, deflecting certain things, yeah. choosing to not be offended. That's very yes. hard. Yeah, that's, that's very, very hard. hard. And so, you know, like hosting, when we consider like, even in our words, especially in our words, yes. what does it look like to host the Lord in our conversations, in our relationships, yeah. um, in yeah. a very honorable way. Yeah. Well, I think that's I, a great place to end. And um, I'd love pray to pray for us. Second? Yeah, I'll pray for us. I'll pray for us in that. Lord, we just, Lord, we come recognizing that we are so imperfect and, um, but you are the perfect one. And we desire, Lord, to honor you with our lives, to honor you with our words, Lord. Mm that out of the overflow of our hearts, our words would speak, Lord. So would you fill us full of your spirit? Lord, would you change our hearts? Would you transform us as we press into you, Mm -hmm. as we obey you, as we meditate on you, as we study your word, as we spend time with you? Would you change us, Lord? Change our hearts that out of the overflow of our hearts, our words might speak of your goodness, might speak of your kindness, might bring life and not death. And so, Jesus, we just thank you for these texts, and we thank you that they do convict and change us. Lord, would you shape us and mold us into your likeness as we study your word? In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, join us, everybody. Um, for, please come back. Come yeah, back. Please, please come back. Please come back. <laughs> this is hard. Let's get through it together. We're in this together. Um, yeah. yeah, as we uh, finish off uh, James chapter three, have a great day.